Welcome back everyone to our NFT brownie project. Previously, we built an NFT contract with Open Zeppelin. We built a Python script to automate deployment. And now we're going to write a script to automate minting our NFT. So join me in your code editor. We are going to create a new script that we are going to call minting.py. Here we can define the main function and then we are going to also have to reference from Brownie our hello world contract. That is the object and then any contracts that are that are deployed they get stored in the hello world object as a list. So we can grab our hello world instance by accessing the object at index negative one. This gives you the latest deployed contract, but you could get the first deployed contract or the second as well, as long as the index exists. Because every time you deploy a contract to the local blockchain, it's going to add it to the hello world object into the list. But if you close the blockchain or close the brownie terminal, then that will reset the blockchain and reset the object. But here we are referencing our latest deployed instance. So you can go into your terminal and you can open the brownie console by using the command brownie console. Then you can test out running. First you have to run deployment. That way the the object of my NFT actually exists. So by the way, I actually made this the wrong name. I have to call this my NFT, not hello world. Okay, so that was the previous project. Now we're at our next project. So now we have a contract that exists. Then we can run our second prod, our second script, which is minting. All right, and that is going to execute and it is going to access the NFT at index negative one. If you, however, kill the brownie terminal and then you relaunch it, that's going to reset the object, my NFT. It's going to be empty again. So if you try to call minting, you're going to get an index out of range error because first you have to deploy that way you actually have something in the object then you can call minting and you can access the latest deployed contract so be careful of that be careful of this list index out of range error okay now let's add some more content into our main function all right so here we can take our nft and we can check its total supply so we can create a supply variable and we can call my NFT dot and then use its functions like total supply. This comes directly from the functions that exist in the contract. So it has to be a public function like total supply. Okay. And then if you're able to get that, you can check it by printing the supply. Right, so we can check if the supply exists. So this time we can call minting again and we get zero because initially our supply is zero. Once you mint an NFT with the contract, your supply goes up by one every time you mint a new token using your NFT contract. So minting is creating an NFT from the contract. So our supply is zero right now. We can also get our contract URI, we can get anything that is public from the Solidity contract, such as this contract URI function. So we could call print my NFT dot contract URI, and we can call minting again. This time we get zero, then we get the link to the contract URI or the contract JSON data. Remember, this contains the contract name, description, and contract image for the collection. But that's just the collection. What if we wanted to create an item in the collection? Because on marketplaces like OpenSea, you have a collection and then you have NFTs in that collection. So how do we create NFTs in that collection? Well, for that, we can use the minting functionality. So we can access my NFT dot mint. 
So we should have a function in our contract that's called mint item. So we can call that function mint item and pass in its required arguments. So it requires the minter address and the token URI for the NFT. So we are going to here call mint item. Who should be our minter? Well, we can take our addresses or accounts actually, it's called accounts at an index like index zero. And accounts, this comes from Brownie. Right, so we're just accessing our first item there. Now, what is going to be our token URI? Well, we can define the token URI and you can actually create the token URI on Pinata, similarly to how you create the contract URI. It's just a way to store your JSON data online and host it. Then you can just reference its link. So here, my token URI that I created is at gateway.pinata.cloud which you can use either that link or you can also use in place of it ipfs.io. Okay, so sometimes there are better results with ipfs.io instead of gateway.pinata.cloud, but typically it doesn't matter. You can use either one. So this, I got this link because I created an account on Pinata. Then I created the new entry which means a new JavaScript object that's being hosted by Pinata. I filled in my details for my NFT and then Pinata is now hosting them. So I can show you this link online. I'm going to go to my browser and paste in the link. So here is the data for the first NFT. We have the name, the description and the image. The name that I set is NFT number one. The description is sample NFT beta and in the image I just found a copyright free image. So this is just data that I have selected for my NFT. Then I just uploaded this data, I just created this object by copying and pasting or just by typing it in onto Pinata. And this describes my NFT. So previously we had a description for the collection, that's the contract URI. Then we have the NFT URI the token URI for each individual token. And you can put in a name, description, image. You can put in whatever attributes you want. Like if you have characters, you could put in the character level, character cape color, the character weapons, character abilities. So you can have whatever properties you want. These are just three properties that I've set for my NFT because typically on marketplaces, every NFT should have a name, a description, and an image at least to be the best on marketplaces because marketplaces will show customers the name, the description, the image for people who want to buy your NFT. But then you can add other attributes as well. So you're not limited to these three. So that is the data which is being stored on Pinata for my token. So that is the token URI. So this is going to mint a new NFT using the function mint item. And we can save the results as a transaction. Then we can print out the transaction variable. So we can call minting again. This time we get the transaction details as a result as well. So we're just printing the transaction. We can also check the total supply now. So we can grab the supply and print the supply again. Typically you should call transaction.wait just to wait a little bit for the transaction to happen. So the transaction gets onto the blockchain. So the NFT is minted onto the blockchain. So just add wait and then call total supply. So now our total supply should go up by one every time we mint. So I can call minting and look at that. Our total supply began at one and now it's at two. And if I call minting again, my supply was two, now it's three. I can kill the brownie console with control D and I can relaunch it. Note that when you relaunch it, you have to redeploy. So we have to call deployment first, then we can call minting. Now we began at zero and we minted one. And if we mint again, then we had one. Now we minted and we have two. So every time you restart the blockchain, your NFTs get cleared from the blockchain because the blockchain gets recreated. That's because 
we just managed to mint an NFT on a local blockchain with Ganache, but you can follow the same steps to mint to a public network like the Robston Ethereum Test Network, the Rinkby Ethereum Test Network, or the Ethereum Mainnet. For that, you have to have accounts with Ether for that network, for whatever network you want to mint or deploy onto. So it's just easiest to test on a local blockchain because Brownie gives you accounts pre-funded. So you don't have to worry about funding them with test ether or real ether. Brownie has just pre-funded them for you. So that way you can test really quickly. So congratulations, everyone. That is how you can mint an NFT on the local blockchain with Brownie. And we also automated it because we created Python scripts to do the minting for us. I'm not writing out minting. I'm just calling a Python script to do the minting for me. Note, if you want to make a change to your smart contract, you have to recompile the contract first. So if I changed my smart contract right now, well, none of those changes would be affected, even if I leave the truffle or the brownie console. Because your contract is the solidity file, but if you change this solidity file, maybe you have a different name, mammoth welcome NFT. Okay, if I change this contract, I've just changed the solidity file, but for deployment, the deployment or brownie uses the build for its deployment, not the solidity file. So if you want to make a change to the contract, you have to recompile, which means the build will be recreated with your changes. So you would have to call Brownie compile after you changed the smart contract. So just a note about making changes. So we successfully managed to create an NFT, deploy it and mint it. If you want to see your NFT on a marketplace like OpenSea, the most popular NFT marketplace, you have to deploy to a public network. For example, OpenSea for testing, it actually supports the RinkB network. So you just have to deploy to the RinkB network instead of a local network. So you would have to have test ether on a RinkB network account, which you can get with MetaMask and a RinkB faucet. If you want to see your NFT on the official OpenSea marketplace, not the test OpenSea Marketplace, then you have to deploy to the Ethereum mainnet. So you need an account with real Ether if you want to deploy to the Ethereum mainnet, because on the mainnet, real Ether is used for transactions versus on the test net, like RinkB, test Ether is used for transactions. All right, so congratulations everyone on learning how to build an NFT and automate it. I will see you next time. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.